Right, so good. Good morning. Let us start our lecture today. Remember that on Thursday we have the meetup. All right. So today we're gonna continue our lecture. So uh, <coughs> any questions on the uh, on the exam? All right. So um, uh, let us continue our lecture today. So uh, Laplace transform. <coughs> of this continuous function. All right. <clears throat> um, so let us define the MSI function. So a MSI function is defined to be one if it is positive at zero when it is negative. All right? <clears throat> so this is the graph of a heavy side function. All right? So uh, the definition of a heavy side function is quite simple. Um, you just type one when the function is, is uh, when t is positive and it is zero when the function is negative. Right. <coughs> um, so, what is h of t minus i? I want to um, right. So, I I, I um, explain again. A heavy side function is a function um, which is one when the function is po uh, when t is positive, and it is zero when t is negative. Right. So, how can I define he the heavy side function uh, h t minus i? <coughs> yes? Would it just be it's one when t minus a is greater than or equal to zero to zero when t minus right. a is greater than? Yes, I'm about to pick up this. Right, so, <coughs> so h of t minus a will be one when t is minus a is bigger than zero, right? Which means that t is bigger than a. <coughs> and this is zero when t minus a is negative when t is smaller than a. <clears throat> All right, so the, by this definition, you can define h of t minus a. So h of t minus a will be 1 when, um, when, uh, when t minus a is, is positive, which means that this is 1 when t is bigger than a, and this is 0 when t is smaller than a. So the graph of this function will be like this. <clears throat> so this is a, so this is 1. So h of t minus a. Right? So this is the graph of the function. So the function will be 1 when um, t is bigger than a, and this is 0 when t is smaller than a. Questions? It's good? Right. So, so let us consider another uh, example of, uh, of this kind of function. So, so example, um, so you have F, Ft, which is S of t minus 1 minus S of t minus 3. All right? So, so now I define the function, which is the difference between S of... Uh, uh, h of t minus 1 and h of t minus 3. All right? So, uh, so I have to, to uh, write out all of the uh, values of this function in, in several different intervals, right? So, okay, so when t is smaller than, so how many cases do we have to consider? I have to find the value of f for several intervals of t, right? Yes? Is it um, three cases when t is less than 1 and t is between 1 and 3 and when t is greater than 3? Yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So when t is smaller than 1, <coughs> so, yes. So we have to consider three cases. When t is smaller than 1, when t is from 1 to 3, and when t is bigger than 3, all right? So case number 1, when t is smaller than 1, so when t is smaller than 1, what is the value of h of t minus 1? Yes? 
is zero, right? Can you say the back of paper, please? So when t is smaller than one, t minus one is negative, which means that h of t minus one is zero, all right? <coughs> Since t minus one is smaller than zero, smaller than So what is the value of h of t minus three? <coughs> Can you sign the back of paper, please? This is still zero because <coughs> t minus three is still negative, right? So, what is the value of f t in this case? Yes. Zero. Yes. Can you sign the back of paper, please? Uh, so you have s of t minus one minus s of t minus three, and this is still zero. All right, so <clears throat> I explain again. Um, in this example, we need to consider two cases of t. The first case is t is smaller than one. So when t is smaller than one, um, t minus one is negative, which means that h of t minus one is zero. Um, when t is smaller than one, t minus three is also negative. And because the heavy side function will be zero when, and when this value is negative, um, so h of t minus three will be zero. So I subtract the two values. I have f of t will be h of t minus one minus h of t minus three, and this is zero. So when t is um, one is smaller than t, and this is smaller than three, <coughs> what is h of t minus one in this case? Now the second case I want to consider is is t is bigger than one but still smaller than three, and, and in this case, what is the value of h of t minus one? Can you say it like a paper, please? So in this case, um, t minus one is bigger than zero, all right? In this case, t minus one is bigger than or equal to zero, which means that h of t minus one is one. Now, what is the value of h t minus three? Yes? Would it be zero? Yes, can you say it like a paper, please? So in this case, t minus, uh, um, t minus three is still negative, right? Which means that f of t minus three is now zero. So now f of t will be s of t minus one minus s of t minus three, and this is still one, all right? So this is the second case. Um, the third case, when t is bigger than three, h of t minus one is. So when t is bigger than three, what is the value of h of t minus one? Yes. One. Yes. Can you sign my paper, please? So in this case, the h of t minus one will still be one, since t minus one is bigger than zero. Now, what is the value of h of t minus three? Yes? One. One. Can you sign it by paper, please? Right. Since t minus three is bigger than zero. So which means that f t will be h of t minus one minus h of t minus three, and this is zero. All right? Now, I explain again. In this case, we have to compute the value of f t, f t uh, and this f t is the difference between two heavy size functions, s t minus one and s t minus three. We have to consider three cases. The first case is t smaller than one. In this case, both heavy size functions are zero because this falls into the negative case, right? Uh, because both of them are zero, f t is zero. The second case is t bigger than one and smaller than three. In this case, h of t minus one is one because t minus one is positive and the other one is still zero. So the difference is one. The third case is t is uh, bigger than three. In this case, h of t minus one and h of t minus three are both one, which means that f is zero, right? So, so 
token proof Mt will be um, zero when t is smaller than one, and it is one when t is from one to three, <coughs> and it is zero when t is bigger than three. All right. Now, I want to graph this uh, function. How can I graph it? Yes. Stand up at the back of the paper, please. So, this is a piecewise uh, function like this. So, this is one, and this is three. So, this is one. All right, so this is the function FT. Right? So, this function FT will be one from one to three and zero elsewhere. It's good. Questions? Right, so let us consider another example. So example, f t is t square times h of t minus 1 minus h of t minus 2. All right? So in this case, we consider the function, uh, which is t squared, h of t minus 1 uh, minus h of t minus 2. How many intervals do I have to consider? <coughs> of t. Three. Yes. What are they? Um, Smaller than negative one. Smaller than one. Between one and negative two, and then the other. Can you say the back of paper, please? So now let's consider case, case number one, right? When t is smaller than one. So when t is smaller than one, what is the value of h of t minus one? Yes. Can you say the back of paper, please? This is still zero because t minus one is negative, right? What is the value of h of t minus two? Uh, yes? This? Yes, can you say it back paper, please? So in this case, still be zero because h of t minus two, uh, t minus two is negative. So what is the value of f t? Yes? Yes. You can say back of paper, please. So this is t square times 0 minus 0, and this is 0. All right? Case number 2. 1 is smaller than t, and this is smaller than 2. h of t minus 1. In this case, what is the value of h of t minus 1? Yes? Inside back of paper case. So in this case, h of t minus 1 will be 1 because t minus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0. Uh, now, what is the value of h of t minus 2? Yes? Yes, can you say the back of paper case? So in this case, h of t minus 2 is 0 because t minus 2 is negative. So m of t will be. Yes? T yes, can you sign the back of paper, please? So this will be t squared times the difference, which is 1 minus 0, and this is t squared. All right? I explain again. In the second case, t is bigger than 1 and smaller than 2. Uh, in this case, s t minus 1 is 1 because t minus 1 is positive, and s of t minus 2 will be 0 because t minus 2 is negative. Ft will be t squared times the difference between this guy and this guy, and this is t squared, right? Uh, case number three. t is bigger than two. When t is bigger than two, what is the value of h of t minus one? Yes? Uh, one. 
Yes, can you sign back paper, paper, please? So in this case, um, S of t minus 1 is 1 because t minus 1 is positive. Now, what is the value of H t minus 2? Yes? It would be 1. Yes, can you sign back paper, please? In this case, it is still 1 because t is minus 2 is bigger than 0. So Ft will be, what is the value? Yes? Zero. Yes, can you sign the back paper, please? So Ft will be t squared times 1 minus 1, and this is 0. So to conclude the function, takes the following form. This is going to be 0. Ft is smaller than 1. It is t squared. When 1 is smaller than t and this is smaller than 2, this is 0 when t is bigger than 2. All right? Um, so, so in this example, we have t squared times the difference between two heavy sized functions. So what you have to do is to consider the cases um, with respect to uh, the values of this uh, heavy side function. The first case, t is smaller than 1. In this case, the two heavy side functions are 0, which means that function f is 0. In um, the second case, t is bigger than 1 and t is smaller than 2. The first heavy side function is 1 and the second one is 0. The difference is 1, so the function is t squared. In the last case, both heavy side functions uh, are 0. Uh, so, so, so the difference is zero. So f t will be, will be zero, which means that f t will be zero when t is smaller than one and bigger than two, and this is t squared uh, from one to, to two, right? Right. So this is the graph of this uh, function. You have one, two. Um, so you have one, and this is four. So this is empty. All right. Um, so in this, um, uh, this is the graph of this function. The function is uh, zero when t is smaller than one and zero when t is bigger than two. In between, it takes the value of t squared. Right. So here it says one squared it is one, and this is two squared it is four. All right. Any questions? Right. So let us go to. Um, Another example. So Laplace transform of heavy side function. All right, so now we have uh, the Laplace transform of a heavy side function. It is 1 over s. Um, uh, so, so this is easy because uh, Laplace transform of the heavy side function will be the integral from zero to infinity of uh, e to the power minus s um, of h t dt, right? And this is going to be integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st times 1 dt. And this gives you integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st dt. <coughs> right? I explain again. And this is nothing but the Laplace transform of the function 1. 
I explain again. So what is the Laplace transform of a heavy side function? So the Laplace transform of a heavy side function will be, by definition, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st times the heavy side function dt, right? But the heavy side function is 1, from 0 to infinity, right? So you can replace 1 here, which means that, uh, the, that this, uh, uh, the, the, heavy, uh, the Laplace transform of the heavy side function will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus s dt, right? And this is nothing but the Laplace transform of the function 1. Questions? It's good. And so this is 1 of s. Remember that? Uh, so I explain again. The, the, the Laplace transform of a heavy side function is the same with the heavy side uh, 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 trans uh, the Laplace transform of the heavy side function is the same with the Laplace transform of the function 1. Why? Because when you take the Laplace transform of the heavy side function, you have to integrate from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st, st dt, right? But, but st is 1 from 0 to infinity, which means that this will be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power minus st times 1 dt. But this is the definition of the Laplace transform of the function 1. And we know that this is 1 over s, right? Um, so, what is the Laplace transform of the function, uh, uh, what is the Laplace transform of h of t minus a? This is the shift. You remember that we have the shifting formula, right? So basically, uh, when you want to shift, what should you do? So um, I can give you this formula. So basically, you have e to the power minus a s times the Laplace transform of function t. Is it in the table as well? T14. T14, right? Okay. So, uh, so, so if you want to Laplace transform, uh, um, 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 so this is t14. So if you want to Laplace transform a function which is cheap, what you do is you multiply e to the power minus a s, Laplace transform of that function, all right? And the Laplace transform of that function is, is 1 over, a, over s, so this is basically uh, uh, this one, right? So there are two formula that you have to remember for, uh, uh, for heavy side function. The first one is that the Laplace transform of the heavy side function is the same with the Laplace transform of the function one. Why? Because this is simply by, uh, just by definition. The Laplace transform of the heavy side function is exponential minus s times the heavy side function. But the heavy side function is one on the domain of integration, which, is, uh, which means that this is the same with the Laplace transform of the function one. Right? The second formula is that, okay, if you want to Laplace transform a function which is cheap, you just have to multiply with e to the power minus sa times the Laplace transform of that function, this is t14. Um, so this Laplace transform is 1 over s. Basically, the Laplace transform of s t minus a will be e to the power minus a s over s. Questions? So let us do some um, exercise.
Um, so, um, right, so uh, there's another formula that I want you to uh, remember. Uh, yes, before going to the exercise, let us, so given a function f, given a function f, ft, and suppose that um, uh, fs is the Laplace transform of this function, then the Laplace transform of f of t minus c, h of t minus c, will be e to the power minus cs, fs. All right, so, the, so we also have a new formula, which is the product of a Laplace transform um, of um, a function times the heavy, heavy sign function, but you have to shift by c. Right, so I give you in advance a function ft, uh, and then suppose that I have um, the Laplace transform of this function. So I have fs is the Laplace transform of the small f function. Uh, so what is the um, uh, the Laplace transform of the product of f of t minus c times h of t minus c? Uh, this is e e to the power minus c s times the Laplace transform of the function f. So proof. So the Laplace transform of f of t minus c, h of t minus c, will be the interval from zero to infinity of f of t minus c, h of t minus c, times e to the power minus s t dt. Right. Right? So, so now I explain again. Suppose that I have a function uh, small f, and the Laplace transform of this function is a function big F. All right? So, what is the Laplace transform of the product of f of t minus c times h of t minus c? This is e to the power minus c s times the function big F. Why is it? So, the first step is that I write out the definition of the Laplace transform of f of t minus c times h of t minus c, which is the interval from 0 to infinity of h t minus c, uh, f, uh, um, f t minus c times h t minus c e to the power minus s t dt. So, what is the value of uh, this function um, Laplace? Uh, what is the value of the heavy side function in this case? What is h of t minus c? Yes? Is it 1 if uh, t minus c is bigger than 0? Right. Can you send my paper, please? So this is 1 when t minus c is bigger than 0. Right? So if t minus c is bigger than 0, I can write like t is bigger than c. And this is 0 when t is smaller than c. Right? All right? Um, so the value of the Laplace uh, of the heavy side function as t minus c will be one when t minus c is positive and is zero when t minus c is negative, right? Um, so I'm gonna plug everything back into this equation. So this gives me. So if t is from zero to c, I have f of t minus c and zero e to the power minus s t dt. And the other one is integral from c to infinity of f t minus c h uh, one e to the power minus s t dt. All right, it's good. Right. So I explain again. The heavy side function is one when t is bigger than c, and it is zero when t is smaller than c. Right. Now I plug everything back into this uh, definition of the Laplace transform of f times h at t uh, minus c, right? So because the function is 
zero when uh, t is smaller than uh, c, which means that uh, here I have to split the intervals into uh, intervals. The first one is from zero to c, and the second one is from c to infinity. When t is from c to uh, zero to c, the heavy side function is zero. Uh, when t is from um, c to infinity, the heavy side function is one. So this goes to zero, right? And the second guy gives you the second guy gives you the interval from c to infinity of m of t minus c d to the power minus st dt. Right? So, uh, someone has an idea how to go to the next uh, computation? Yes? Well, now it's just the shifting. Yes. So you shift by C. Right. Can you stand back, paper, please? So now you have to shift the variable, right? So we put tau to be t minus c, right? So mt minus c will be m tau, e to the power minus st will be e to the power minus st minus c minus um, nc, right? And this is e to the power minus s tau, e to the power minus nc. It's good. And then dt will be d tau. Right, so now you have to shift the variable. Um, I'm gonna put a new variable, tau to be t minus c. So if I put tau to be t minus c, the first guy gives you f tau, right? You just change the name. The second guy is e to power minus st. So e to power minus st is e to power minus st minus c minus sc, right? Because here I have to add sc, and here I have to subtract um, sc. So the first guy is my, uh, e to power minus s tau, right? Uh, so which means that here I have e to power minus s tau and times e to power minus s c, dt becomes d tau. So this guy will give you the integral from zero to infinity of f tau, e to power minus s tau, e to power minus s c, d tau. Right? I explain again. Um, so by the definition of the heavy side function, everything which is smaller than t, c is zero, which means that this integral is reduced to the integral from zero c to infinity of f t minus c one e to power minus s t dt, right? So, so I rewrite this guy here. The next next step is to shift because here I see that I have t minus c. I want this to be a new variable, so I have to do the change of variable tau is t minus c. In this case, f of t minus c will be f tau. e to power minus sc will be e to power minus sc minus c. But here I'm adding sc, so I have to subtract sc. Uh, I'm adding sc because here I have minus and minus. All right. So this guy is tau. So here I have e to power minus sc times tau, and here I have e to power minus sc. Dt is now d tau. This guy can be written like the integral from zero to infinity of f tau e to the power minus s tau e to the power minus s e d tau. Right? So what is the next step? Yes? That's just equal to e to the minus s c times the uh, Laplace transform of uh, f of t. Yes, can you stand back to paper, please? So this guy is not integrated, right? So I can put it outside. So this gives me e to the power minus sc integral from zero to infinity of f tau e to the power minus s tau d tau. This is the Laplace transform. So this gives me e to the power minus sc fs. Right? And uh, which is the, the right the right side that I have here. I explain again. So here, e to the power minus sc doesn't have the tau, so it's not integrated. I can put it outside. The left over is the integral from zero to infinity of f tau e to the power minus s tau e tau, which is nothing but the Laplace transform of the function f. 
So basically, I have e to the power minus c times the Laplace transform, which is this term. All right? It's, it's good. Questions? Right. So we're going to do some exercise um, uh, to understand this uh, formula. So exercise. <coughs> Laplace transform of t square h of t minus one. <coughs> right. So I have to I have to use the uh, formula over there, right? So what is the function f in this case? Yes? Mm, can you say the back of paper, please? Right? So you identify this guy. So the goal is to use this formula, right? You have to use this guy. So you have to identify this guy with this guy, right? So you, have, you need to have t square h of t minus 1 to be f of t minus c, h of t minus c. Right, so in this case, what is the value of C that you guess? I have to compute the Laplace transform of this function, right? And I want to use this formula, which means that I have to identify this guy and this guy, right? So, so what is the value of C? Yes? Yes, can you say that? Pick up this. So in this case, T, C has to be 1. Because you see, t minus 1 and t minus c, all right? Right? I explain again. I want to use this formula to compute this Laplace transform. Uh, so in this case, I have to identify uh, this function with this function. So I have to identify what is c. So you see that here I have the heavy side t minus 1, and here I have heavy side t minus c, which means the c has to be 1. Right? And then, what is f? f? f t minus c has to be this way, right? And f of t minus c has to be this way, which means that f of t minus 1 has to be this way. What is f? f of t minus 1 is this way. So what is f? T minus one, yes? T plus one squared. T plus one squared. Can you sign back the paper, please? Which means that FT is T plus one squared. Right? Uh, right, so, so uh, which means that you have the Laplace transform of T square H of T minus one will be. Uh, the Laplace transform of f of t minus 1, h of t minus 1, with f t to be t plus 1 squared. Right, so this is important because f of t minus 1 is t squared, then uh, f of t is t plus 1 squared. Do you understand why we have from here to here? Right, so, so to see that, because um, you have what? You have f of t minus 1 is t squared. So if I put this guy to be s, I have f s is. Uh, right. So so I have f of t minus 1 is t minus 1 plus 1 square, right? So which means that f t has to be t plus 1. So I have f of t minus 1 is t square, which means that f of t minus 1 is t minus 1 plus 1 square. Um, so this is t, this is t, so I have f t is t plus 1 square. Right? 
so now I identify uh, um, the Laplace transform of t square s t minus one will be the Laplace transform of f of t minus one s t minus one with f t to be t plus one square, right? So t plus one square is t square plus two t plus one. Right? So how can I use this formula? Yes? So then it would be e to the negative s times the Laplace transform of t squared plus 2t plus 1. Yes, can you send back the paper, please? So now I'm going to use this formula, right? So I have Laplace transform of t squared s of t minus t minus 1 gives me e to the power minus s Laplace transform of t squared plus 2t plus 1. Right? I explain again. So in this example, I have to compute the Laplace transform of t squared h of t minus 1. Uh, I have to identify this quantity with this quantity, uh, which means that I have to choose um, c. So I have t squared s t minus 1 is equal to f t minus c s t minus c. So here I have t minus 1, here I have t minus c, which means that c has to be 1. So if I choose t, c to be 1, I have f of t minus c, t square, f t minus 1, t square, f t will be t plus 1 square. Um, so then the Laplace transform of t square, s of t minus 1, will be Laplace transform of f t minus 1, s t minus 1. So now I have f of t minus 1 um, is t square, so f t is t plus 1 square, which is t square plus 2t plus 1. So the Laplace transform of t square, s t minus 1, will be e to the power minus s times the Laplace transform of this guy, right? So this gives me e to the power minus s, Laplace transform of t squared plus e to the power minus s times 2 Laplace transform of t plus e to the power minus s, Laplace transform of 1, right? All right, so here I have e to the power minus s times Laplace transform of t squared plus 2t plus 1. I split them. So what is the Laplace transform of t squared? Yes? Two over s cubed. Yes, can you sign back paper please? So this guy gives you two over s cubed. What is Laplace transform of t? Yes? Yes, can you sign back paper please? So here I have e to the power minus s times 2 over s squared. What is the Laplace transform of 1? Yes? 1 over s. Yes, can you say back the paper, please? Right, so this gives you 1 over s. Right? Simple. All right, all right. All right, so let us go to another example. So in this example, we have what we have. Um, we have to compute the Laplace transform of t to the t plus 1 times h of t minus 2. All right, so can you tell me what is c in this case? I have e to the t plus 1 times h of t minus 2. Right, so I want to use that formula. Trevor? Uh, c is 2 in this case. Yes, can you sign back my paper, please? So you have e to the t plus 1 h of t minus 2 um, is f of t minus c, right? h of t minus c. So the goal is to use this formula, right? which means that I have to identify e to the t plus 1 s t minus 2 f t minus c s t minus c which means that c has to be 2 in this case f of t minus c is e to the t plus 1 which means that f of t minus 2 is e to the t plus 1 so what is f? yes? e to the t 
plus two plus one. Yes, can you sign it back? Take off this. Right? So f of t minus two is e to the t plus one, which is e to the t minus two plus two plus one. All right? Um, which means that f t has to be e to the t plus two plus one. And this is e squared e to the t plus one. All right? I explain again. The goal is to use this uh, formula um, that we wrote here. Then I have to identify e to the t plus one t h t minus two with f t minus c h t minus c. So I have to ident identify h t minus two with h t minus c, which means that c has to be two, right? So, so when when this guy is equal to this guy, I have this square is equal to this square, right? Which means that this square is equal to this square. Um, which means that f of t minus two is e to the t plus one, right? So e to the t is e to the t minus two plus two plus one, which means that f t has to be e to the t plus two. So I replace here by two plus one, and this is e square e t plus one. Questions? Right. So now I want to use this formula. Um, so the Laplace transform of e to the t plus one h uh, of t minus two will be e to the power minus two s. Uh, the Laplace transform of that function f t. I have e square e to the e to the t plus one, right? Um, so, right, so I explain again. I have uh, Laplace transform of e to the t plus one st minus two. So this gives you. Um, uh, f of t minus c, s t minus c, in this case c is 2, so f of t minus c e to the t plus 1, um, so which means that f t has to be e square e t plus 1. Now I apply this formula for c to be 2, I have e to the power minus 2s, Laplace transform e square e t plus 1, which is the function f t over there, and this gives me e to the power minus 2s, Laplace transform e square e t plus so e squared can be outside, right? Plus Laplace transform uh, e to power minus two s times Laplace transform of one. What is the Laplace transform of e to the t? Can you say back paper, please? So this gives you e to the power minus two s e to the s e to square one over s minus one. What is the Laplace transform of one? Yes. Yes. Can you say back paper, please? So this gives me e to the power minus two s over s. Right? Questions? Right. So basically, whenever you see a <coughs> heavy side function. Uh, what you have to do is to use this formula, right? All right. So now we will uh, we're gonna do a, a more difficult uh, exercise, which is trying to do the inverse Laplace transform of this function. So now I have to do the inverse Laplace transform of this guy, right? e to the power minus 3s over s squared. I want to convert that into this formula, right? So e to the power minus 3s over s squared 
is d to from s c s Laplace transform of sub function. Right? So I explain again. Now I want to use this formula to compute the Laplace transform. Uh, the inverse Laplace transform. So here I have the inverse Laplace transform e to the power minus 3s over s squared. And I want to write it under the form e to the power minus cs times fs so, I, so that I can go back to this function. Um, so what is c in this case? Yes? Three. Yes, can you sign a back of paper, please? So in this case, I can see that c has to be 3. What is the capital F? Yes, can you sign back of paper, please? So the capital F will be 1 over S squared, right? So the capital F will be, um, the capital Fs, in this case, will be the Laplace transform of some other function, like in this formula, right? So what is the small f? So, so Fs is what? Yes? Yes, can you send back paper, please? So which means that Fs has to be the inverse Laplace transform 1 over S square, and this has to be T. Right? I explain again. In this case, I still want to use this formula to compute the inverse Laplace transform. Right? I have uh, the inverse Laplace transform of e to the power minus 3s over s squared, and I want to write it under this form, right? So I write e to the power minus 3s s over s squared um, is e to the power minus cs times capital F. In this case, c has to be 3, so capital F um, has to be 1 over s squared. Um, so 1 over s squared has to be the, the Laplace transform of this function small f. So I found that the small f is one uh, is t, right? So so what is t? the first Laplace transform in two minus c three s of s one? So what is this inverse Laplace transform? Yes. T minus 3 times the heavy side function of T minus 3. Yes, can you say back the paper, please? So I'm going to use this formula then, right? So I use this formula, and I have F of T minus C, S of T minus C. In this case, C is 3, so this is F of T minus 3, S of T minus 3. F is T, so I have T minus 3, S of T minus 3. I explain again. Uh, in this example, we're going to take advantage of this formula to compute the inverse Laplace transform. All right? I have to compute the inverse Laplace transform of e to the power minus 3s over s squared, which I want to use this formula. So I write it like e to the power minus c s times capital F. c has to be 3 and the capital s has to be 1 over s squared. Um, the capital F will be the Laplace transform of some function. This function is the inverse Laplace transform 1 over s squared and it has to be t. Right? Now I'm going to use this formula but in the inverse form. So the inverse Laplace transform of e to the power minus 3s over s squared will be f of t minus c, s t minus c. Um, um, c is 3, right? So here I have f of t minus 3 times h of t minus 3. f is c, so I have t minus 3 times h minus 3. It's clear? Questions? Right, so um, let us go to another example. Right. Any questions so far? That's good. So the next example is. 
the inverse vectors transform of e to the power minus 2s times 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 1. So, again, in this case, I'm going to use this formula again. So, I have e to the power minus 2s times 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4. And this gives me e to the power minus c s times ms. Right? What is c? Um, I explain again. Now, I have to use this formula to compute the first Laplace transform of e to the power minus 2s times. 3 over s plus 1, s over s squared plus 1, right? Um, to do that, I'm going to apply this formula, which means that I have to write e to the power minus 2s, 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4, s e to the power minus c s m s. What is c? Yes? Two. Yes, can you stand by the paper, please? So in this case, I have c is 2. What is m s? Yes? Um, the 3 over s plus s over s plus s. Yes, can you say it by paper, please? So now I have 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4. <coughs> right? What is the next step? Yes? Yes, can you say it by paper, please? So now, the next step is to find this small f, right? So you have fs is the Laplace transform of this little f. So this little f will be the inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s plus um, s over s squared plus 4. So little f will be the inverse Laplace transform 3 times 1 over s plus uh, inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 4. Right? So the next step is to find this little f. This little f is uh, the inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4. Right? Which is 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus the inverse Laplace transform of s squared plus 4. What is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s? Yes. Yes, can you sign by the paper, please? So this gives me 3 times 1. What is the inverse of the plus transform of s over s squared plus 4? <coughs> yes? Yes, can you sign by the paper, please? So, yes, cosine of 2t. All right, I explain again. Again, I'm going to have to use this formula to compute the inverse Laplace transform, right? So, uh, so here I have e to the power minus 2s times this guy, and I have to identify that with the right-hand side, which is minus cs times fs. So I can see clearly that c has to be 2, and this uh, capital F is 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4. This capital F will be the Laplace transform of the little f, Right, so the little f will be the inverse Laplace transform of this guy, which is three times the inverse Laplace transform of one of s, plus the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus four. The inverse Laplace transform of one of s is one, and the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus four is cosine of two s. Right. So, um, what is the inverse Laplace transform of this guy? C is 2, so this is f of t minus 2, s of t minus 2, 
and this gives me 3 plus cosinus of 2t minus 2 times h of t minus 2 right <coughs> um, so I explain again the inverse Laplace transform will be 2 power minus 2s times this guy 3 over s plus s over s squared plus 4 can be computed using this formula right so it's gonna be the inverse of this formula so I have f of t minus c h of t minus c but we know that c is 2 so this is f of t minus 2 times h of t minus 2 f is 3 plus cosinus 2t so here I have f 3 plus cosinus 2t minus 2 h t minus 2 right questions right so it's good any questions on this uh, thing all right so uh, so I gonna so let us continue with uh, an example where we use this formula to solve um, a differential equation all right uh, example you have y second plus uh, 3y prime plus 2y is equal to gt Right, so now you have uh, y0, y prime, and 0, and this is 1, and the function gt will be 1, when t is going from 1 to 0 to 1, and it is 0, when t is bigger than 1. Right, so this is solving from 0 to infinity, because the initial condition is at 0. Um, right, so um, in this example, we're going to use this formula to solve a differential equation. All right, um, so the equation that I have is y second plus 3y prime plus 2y is gt. Uh, the, the equation has an initial condition as 0, right, which means that we have to solve from 0 to infinity. So y0 is y prime is 0, it's 1, and the gt will be 1 when t is going from 1. 0 to 1, and this is 0 when t is bigger than 1. Right? Questions? Alright, so of course, this is a second order differential equation, non homogeneous, right? Um, so this is y prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is gt. This is second order, right? This is non-homogeneous. This is constant pollution. Coefficients. And this is linear. Right? So this is a second order differential equation. Constant coefficient, non-homogeneous, um, second order. And this is linear. Um, uh, can we use the method of undetermined coefficient for this equation? Right, so what is the method of undetermined coefficient? Undetermined, undetermined First you have to find a particular solution, yp, right? Particular solution Um, and then you have y1 and y2, they are the solution of the homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation. Right, so first you have to find yp second plus 3yp prime plus yp is gt. And then you find a solution of homogeneous equation, you have y1 second plus 3y1 prime plus 2y1 is 0, 
and y2 second plus 3 y2 prime plus 2 y2 is 0 and then you sum, sum up everything right so you have c1 plus c uh, Right, so this is the method of undetermined coefficient. First, you find a particular solution. xp second plus 3xp, uh, yp second plus 3yp prime plus 2yp is equal to gt. And then you solve the homogeneous equation. The homogeneous equation, of course, has two solutions, y1 and y2. And then you sum up everything. You have yp plus c1, y1 plus c2y2. Does it work in this case? Yes, can you send a back paper, please? So, so here it still works because it is, uh, hom uh, it is homogeneous, right? And, and here you have to find uh, the, the particular solution. Um, but can we find a particular solution in this case? Can, can we guess the particular solution in this case? So we have nine cases to guess the initial uh, the particular solution, right? In the previous lectures. So does this fall into one of those cases? Yes, you can still find a particular solution, but uh, but we need the nine cases, right? The the this belong to any of the cases? Yes. We have to know what kind of function. Uh, GT is given here. Oh, yes, sorry. So, no, because it's not GT is function. Right, right. Can you say back the paper, please? So, in this case, the source is not continuous. And in the nice cases that we studied in the previous classes, um, all of the cases there are for continuous sources, right? So, so basically, this is a discontinuous function. The function is 1. When it's, it's going from 1 to 0, but it is 0 elsewhere. And in the nice cases that we have, we have exponential, we have cosine sinus, we have polynomials, we have combination of them, we have in total nine cases. Um, all of them are continuous function, and this is a discontinuous one, right? So you can guess a particular solution. I'm not saying that you cannot uh, guess any particular solution, but it doesn't fall into those nine cases. And this is very difficult, right? So basically, this is why we need the Laplace transform, because the Laplace transform make it much easier than follow this scheme, right? right so let us solve it by, um, so this is broken. This is broken because G is discontinuous. Right? So the method of uh, undetermined uh, coefficients has a difficulty here because the SOX is discontinuous and it doesn't fall into the nine cases that we study, including exponential, cosinus sinus, and polynomial and the combi uh, combination of them. All right? Questions? So now, which means that we have to do uh, Laplace transform. This is the only way, only easy way to do this. All right, so now let us Laplace transform this equation, right? So you have Laplace, Laplace transform of GT. All right. So I explain again. In this case, the source G is discontinuous, right? The external external force is discontinuous. So the ninth case is of uh, the uh, method of undetermined coefficient cannot be applied, and we have to use Laplace transform. Now, now we have to Laplace transform both sides. All right. So, to Laplace transform both sides, I want to write GT as I have a side function. All right. So, how can I write this heavy side function? So this function is, 
this is uh, one from zero to one and zero elsewhere, right? So this is GT, right? And I want to write that like a heavy side function. How can do it? I do it? Say I want to write like the, the, the difference between two heavy size functions or a constant with the heavy side function. How can I do it? Yes? Yeah, that uh, that's is a very good idea. Can you sign the bind of flip of this? Oh no, it wouldn't. That no, would no, be no, it's, it's, no, it's, just, it's a good idea, right? So the uh, edge of t minus one will be this guy. So this is the edge of t minus one, right? The heavy side function s t minus one will be one when t is bigger than one and then this is zero elsewhere. And here you have um, uh, one from zero to one and zero here, right? So you can see that this guy is a complement of this guy. So how can I turn this guy into this guy? The hint is that this is a complement, right? And explain again. This GT is one from zero to one, and zero from here to here. Forget about this uh, part. And this guy is one from here to here, and zero from here to here. And I said that this is a complement of this guy, so how can I turn this guy into this guy? Uh, at h of negative t plus one. H of negative t plus one. So it's gonna be here. right? So this function is from is one from one to infinity, and this is zero from zero to one. So forget about this part and forget about this part. Let us consider all these. Uh, 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 t bigger than zero, right? So, so here this function is zero, while this function is uh, this function is one here, and this function is zero here, and this function is one here, and this function is zero here. How can I turn the second one into the first one? Remember that when the second one is zero, the first one is one, and when the second one is one, the first one is zero. Yes. Well, I was S of t minus S of t minus one. So, uh, yes. Right. Can you say the back of this? Right. So, g t will be S of t minus S of t minus one. Right. Or simpler, this is one minus S of t minus one. Right. When t is bigger than zero. Right. On on the on this one. Right. So I explain again. Um, this uh, h of t minus one is a complement of h of t, uh, of f of t, g of t, because when this h of t minus one is zero, this guy is one, and when this is one, this guy is zero, which means that you have to take one, subtract this function to get this function, right? To take one, subtract this function to get this function, I just take h of t, and this is h of t minus h of t minus one. This is a very excellent idea, right? Questions? Right, so so we see that gt is h of t minus s of t minus one. Uh, right, so um, so now I want to Laplace transform this function gt. Right, so this gives me the Laplace transform of h of t minus Laplace transform of h of t minus one. Right, so which means that this is the Laplace transform of h of t minus the Laplace transform of h of t minus one. What is the Laplace transform of h of t? Yes? Uh, one over s. Yes, one. Can you stand at the binary of paper of this? This is one over s. And what is the Laplace transform of h of t minus one? We wrote the formula for h of t minus a from the beginning of the class. What is it? Yes? Uh, <coughs> e to the negative s over s. Yes, can you sign the of paper, please? So this is e to the power minus s over s, right? All right, all right, all right. Um, and, uh, so I explain again. So in this case, the 
external force G is discontinuous, we cannot we can use the method of discontinuous uh, uh, undetermined coefficient, but it doesn't fall into the nice cases that we consider, which are all continuous function. So the best way to do this is to Laplace transform both sides, right? To Laplace transform both sides, I have to Laplace transform the right hand side. The right hand side is the difference between ht and ht minus 1. So Laplace transform the right hand side is the Laplace transform of ht minus Laplace transform of ht minus 1. So the Laplace transform of ht is 1 over s. Laplace transform of ht minus 1 is e to the power minus over s, right? So now, what is Laplace transform of y second? Yes? S squared times the Laplace transform of y uh, minus s times y naught minus uh, y prime naught. Yes, can you say and the back of the back this? So this is s squared Laplace transform of y minus s y zero minus y prime minus zero. All right, so this is the formula that we have. Laplace transform of y second will be s squared Laplace transform of y minus s y zero minus y prime minus zero. So what is the, this, uh, what is the right result of this computation? Yes? Uh, yes, inside the back of this. So this is s squared Laplace transform of y minus s minus 1. Right, because y0 and y prime is 0 is 1. Uh, so I explain it again. So now I have to compute the Laplace transform of y second. The Laplace transform of y second is s squared Laplace transform of y minus s y0 minus y prime is 0. y0 and y prime 0 are both 1. So here I have s squared Laplace transform of y minus s minus 1. Questions? It's good. Right, so now we compute Laplace transform of y second. What is uh, of y prime? What is Laplace transform of y prime? Yes? S times the Laplace transform of y minus square root. Yes, can you stand back a bit for this? So we have S Laplace transform of Y minus Y zero. And what is the result of this? Yes? S times the Laplace of Y minus one. Yes, can you side and back the back of this? So this is S times Laplace Y minus one. Alright? So I'm gonna put everything back into the equation, right? So I have Laplace transform y second plus three, Laplace transform y plus two y will give me s squared Laplace transform y minus s minus one uh, plus three s Laplace transform y minus three plus two times Laplace transform y. All right? So the next step is I have to put everything back into the equation. So Laplace transform y second is s squared Laplace transform y minus s minus one. Um, um, here I have three times Laplace transform y prime, which is three s Laplace transform y minus three, uh, and here I have two times Laplace transform of y. Right. So now I'm gonna group this guy, this guy, this guy. I have s squared plus three s plus two Laplace transform of y. This guy, this guy, this guy will be minus s minus four. All right. So we continue on next Tuesday. Remember that on Thursday we have the midterm.